Married at First Sight by Gu Lingfei. Chapter 11. Let's go. Despite tearing into serenity in his mind, Zachary had no intention to say or do anything about it. Serenity was his wife on paper, but they were no different than strangers. Too scared to say anything, the driver started the car. Serenity had no idea she nearly ran into her man's car. She sped off on her e-bike and made it to the shop in no time. Jasmine always arrived earlier than Serenity since the former lived nearby. Saren. Jasmine ordered breakfast after she was done setting up the shop. She was enjoying breakfast when her best friend entered the scene. Jasmine asked with a smile, Have you eaten? Yeah. Oh. Jasmine went on to finish the most important meal of the day. I brought you some desserts. They're delicious. Try them, Jasmine told her best friend while putting down her bag by the cash register. Serenity placed her bike keys by the cash register and sat down before pulling over the bag containing the dessert. You can't go wrong with desserts. I saw a Rolls Royce on my way to work, Jasmine. Jasmine replied, I see. It's not strange to spot a Rolls Royce in Wiltspoon, but it's not a common sight. Did you see who's in the car? Is it just like in the books, a hot and single CEO? Serenity stared at Jasmine without a word. Jasmine chuckled. That's what it's like in the books. Why are the young, hot, and rich CEOs eluding us? The storylines are made up to cater to the market. Would anyone read a book if it's about your average wage earner? The leading man has to be society's elite even if he isn't a CEO. Jasmine burst into another bout of laughter. That reminds me. Are you free tonight, Saren? You know I'm either at home or at the shop, right? What's the matter? Life was simple to Serenity as it only revolved around managing the shop and caring for her sister's son. There's a dinner party tonight. It's a gathering of high society. I got an invitation. Do you want to come along and have a peek into their world? Serenity turned down the offer. I don't run in the same circle as them. I'm not interested. Although she earned quite a bit, the upper crust was beyond her reach. She had no intention to elbow her way into the community, nor did she have the means to. To be frank, Serenity might be mistaken as the server if someone of her social status were to attend such a refined dinner party. I don't want to go either, but my mom begged my aunt for an invite. I can bring a plus one, so I thought of taking you. Saren, oh Saren. Please come with me to see what it's like. Wait, no. I need you there to be my rock. I don't want my mom to nag at me. The Soxes were wealthy and locals of Wiltspoon. They owned several properties and half a block of stores, making their tens of millions through rent. However, wealth could not buy social standing. Mrs. Sox took pride in her daughter's pretty face as marrying her off could be the ticket to a higher social class. Jasmine's aunt happened to marry into a rich and powerful family. It had been a few tough decades, but it finally worked out for the aunt as she was now rubbing shoulders with the upper class. The aunt doted on Jasmine and believed her niece had just only what it took to bag a wealthy and influential bachelor. Since Jasmine's mom asked, the aunt was happy to make it happen for Jasmine. Is Mrs. Sox pressuring you to get married again? All mothers are the same. They can't wait to kick their daughters out and make them another man's problem once their daughters turn 18. I can make my own money and be financially independent. I don't need a man to enjoy a good life. I think you shouldn't marry out of your social class. 
I don't want to marry up. Although my aunt is mingling well with the circle, it took her decades to get there. She faced a lot of difficulties when she first married her husband. She used to cry to my mom when she visited back then. She knows what it's like. Jasmine was all for freedom and not being bound by the upper crust's unwritten rules. Come on, Saren. Just tonight. We'll be in this together. We get to see how the top 1% live. My aunt said there will be a lot of young eligible bachelors attending tonight. They're all Wiltspoon's finest and richest. We can check the scene out even if we're not there to snag a man. It's a dinner party, so there's going to be lots of good food. Serenity was not one to say no to food. So was Jasmine. It was that common interest that brought the pair together. It took an hour of convincing before Serenity gave in to her best friend's request. They closed the store early to attend the event. Serenity called Liberty and asked about Sonny. He had seen a doctor, and the fever was only a case of the sniffles. It put Serenity's mind at ease. She then told Liberty about attending a dinner party with Jasmine. It's nice even if it's just for the experience. Of course, you could make some friends from that circle. Liberty was in favor of Serenity attending the party. It was not for any other reason than to witness the other side of the world. The shop was closed right after lunch just to attend tonight's party. Jasmine dragged her best friend home to put on some fancy dress and slap some makeup on. Since the Soxes adored Serenity, they had no problem with Jasmine bringing Serenity along to the dinner party. Serenity was married anyway, so there was no concern that Serenity would steal the limelight from Jasmine. Just after six in the evening, a sedan arranged by Jasmine's aunt rolled into the Soxes' driveway. Have fun! Seeing the girls off at the door, Mrs. Sox said to Serenity, Help me keep an eye on Jasmine, Saren. Don't let her stuff her face. Get her to socialize with the young bachelors. She told her daughter, Jasmine, your aunt has done a lot for you. Don't let her down. Serenity replied with a smile, Don't worry, Mrs. Sox. I'll help you keep an eye on Jasmine so she doesn't wander off to the buffet. They would hang out at the buffet together. I feel relieved with you around. Mrs. Sox was fond of Serenity because the girl was sensible and independent. Had it not been because her son was a lot younger than Serenity, Mrs. Sox would have played matchmaker for them. It was regrettable that Serenity was taken. There were a lot of youngsters in the Sox family. Serenity could have picked any one of them if she wanted to walk down the aisle. It was what it was. There was no point talking about it since it was not like Mrs. Sox's regret could change anything. With Mrs. Sox urging them to hurry up, Jasmine, dolled up in glamorous makeup, white gown, and jewelry, dragged her best friend into the sedan arranged by the aunt. Seeing that Serenity was married and acting as a plus one, she did not bother to dress up. She wore her usual clothes and put on natural makeup. Nevertheless, her natural beauty still shone through despite her plain attire.